everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host Emily Campagno. Also joining us, Fox News correspondent Molly Line, president of KA Consulting and former senior counselor to President Trump, Kellyanne Conway, and Vets on Duty chairman and former Army Intelligence Captain, Jeremy Hunt. Well, we begin with the race for the White House. President Biden taking his time to hit the campaign trail. That's putting it kindly. While the competition kicks into high gear. It's been a little over one month since the president officially launched his reelection campaign with a video announcement and Biden hasn't had any public campaign rallies or launch events since not even from his basement. Meanwhile, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who only announced his 2024 ambitions last week, he's already on the road. He's making multiple stops in the King's key swing state of Iowa with a kickoff event tonight in Des Moines. And DeSantis won't be alone in the Hawkeye state. Former President Trump and Senator Tim Scott are also looking to get an edge with Iowa voters, with both of them set to hold rallies there this week. But while the pool of GOP contenders grows tighter by the day, it appears President Biden isn't focused on his opponents. Hey, my president, what do you think of the way that the 2024 Republican deal is taking out? I haven't been able to keep up with it as soon as so quickly. And, uh, you know, I'm not being facetious. I'm, I'm being very serious. I haven't focused on it that much. It seems like a lot of competent candidates are trying to get the nomination. So we'll see. He says he doesn't focus on it that much. Um, Kellyanne, one time he, he said he didn't focus on the poll numbers. Then we found out he held regular polling meetings as almost any president would do. Um, but it's not just no campaign events. It's no headquarters for his campaign. He's not out there touting fundraising numbers. Is he behind or does he just take this all for granted? He also has a no-show presidency, Kaylee. That's the biggest problem here. Most Democrats do not want Joe Biden to seek a second term. And I have a question for President Biden today. Why do you want the job? No one else seems to want you to keep that job. Uh, we, I kind of sort of want him to keep the job because I'm scared to death of his vice president ever becoming president. And he chose one of three people in the entire country as his VP who couldn't upstage him. And I'll think of the other two at some other time. Uh, so there's that. But... If your own party isn't behind you, if 38% of Democratic primary voters right now are going for Robert F. Kennedy yeah. Jr. or <laughs> Marion Williamson, who aren't even allowed to debate, they won't have a debate against him, then it tells you something. Um, also, the basement strategy won't work this time. A couple things. First of all, the basement in the White House is the Situation Room, and he's not a good commander in chief. He hardly goes there to do anything of note, like our former boss taking out Soleimani or Baghdadi mm. and the like. Um, also, it's not going to work this time, Kaylee, because unlike 2022, when Biden and Harris were mostly sidelined from campaigning for congressional and Senate candidates, their names are on the ballot. They will be expected to go out and meet the voters, connect with them, eyeball to eyeball, shoulder to shoulder. So it's not going to be effective. Look, all of his poll numbers are down on every major issue. And then his personal attributes, according to the Fox News poll, only a third think he's got a vision for the country. They don't think he's got the mental sharpness and the physical stamina. Mm -hmm. And to voters, agility is ability. That's not gonna change between now and next November. That's exactly right. And look, Emily, you know, defeat is by no means inevitable. We've <clears throat> talked about that with Biden, just, mm -hmm. you know, because he's unpopular. Kellyanne knows that as well. You know, we have to put forward a, a positive agenda as a party. Um, but Biden, you know, for a moment, I, I totally agree. The basement strategy not going to work. And neither is the surrogate strategy. We got some reporting from NBC News that to win re-election, President Joe Biden plans to tap an expansive stable of friends and allies to go where he can't, say what he won't, and be what he'll never be. But it sounds a lot like the basement just with TikTok influencers instead. That's right. And I note, too, the sort of rosy lens that they're painting about that. They're sort of ignoring the fact that, all right, so the main candidate, for all the reasons that Kellyanne just articulated, isn't doing so well. But look what we're going to put in his stead, this glittery stable of people who are going to spread his message for him, except they don't agree and they're not going to be actually uh, counted on to say that same message. So even Jim Messina, who ran Obama's reelection campaign, he said, well, you know, it's true. It's not true 10 years ago, but you can't just recycle the usual talking points. This is him, again, painting it with a rosy brush. So he said, look on the bright side. You can't just recycle the usual talking points. That won't go viral. That's their focus. So he says it won't break through. So you need people that can speak in their own voice. Will it work every time? No. 
He says, will there be times when someone says something you wish they hadn't? Of course, but overall, this will be more real and authentic. The point is, it's real and authentic to the surrogates. It's real and authentic to everyone putting forth their own proclivities, their own messages, their own wants and desires and goals, irrespective of what they think the president will put out and his talking points. So I think it's a quite schizophrenic, schizophrenic you know, shotgun blast of a strategy that I don't see working and no amount of rose-colored lens will make the American people appreciate it too. It's too much of a civil war. There's too much cannibalism. They need to focus their message for it to actually be successful or simply have a candidate that people want to see. Yeah, um, good luck with that. There's not a very deep bench on the Democrat side, but Molly, the, there was a Washington Post ABC poll earlier in the, in the month. It showed both Trump and DeSantis each on their own defeating President Biden. That should be cause for alarm bells. If I'm in the White House, that, that causes me to say, wait, we need to figure things out here. Yeah, you talk about the bench, and that is going to be one of the most entertaining things we're going to watch as 2024 gets started is this big bench uh, on the Republican side, and that is a big question that the Democrats will have as they head out into the field. Theoretically, President Biden will eventually have to get there. Right now, he's protected essentially by the presidency itself. Uh, he gets all the media coverage. You can question, you know, how it will be positively covered. That'll be his big challenge. But the pandemic may have protected the first run. Now he has the actual presidency, and he's got to run on a record that is still instantly ever evolving. Uh, here's a quote. This is Senator Chris Coons of Delaware, longtime Biden alley. He also has been announced as, as being involved in the campaign co-chairman. He said, Frank Frankly, the best way to run for re-election as president is to be president. And so that may be the, yeah. this, the ongoing strategy. It, it is a pretty smart strategy on his part. I just don't think it will work because he's so deeply, deeply unpopular at this point. Sure. How low can you go is the new name for the <laughs> polls, Jeremy. But on the Republican side, you have Trump. He's going to be in Urbandale, Iowa on Thursday. Huge town hall with Sean Hannity here on Fox News. DeSantis, I believe he has 12 stop, stops in three of the early states. And then Joni Ernst, she has a barbecue. Haley, Scott, Elder, Ramaswamy. Tommy Hutchinson, Johnson will all be there. It feels like we are off to the races. Yes, we are. I mean, look, what we have on the right is we have a deep bench of, of folks who have, we have real talent, and we're going to have a, a serious kind of debate going forward on what our party is about and how we're going to present ourselves in 2024. And I, I can say this. Look, I think Biden, what he's hoping for is that, you know, kind of Republican infighting will just play out. We'll just eat each other alive in the media for the next year and a half, and he'll just kind of skate by. He'll hope that independent voters will just, you know, kind of choose him by default. Um, because ultimately, he's a failed president. And his only hope is being just the kind of default candidate if independent voters feel like they can't trust Republicans. So that's why many of us on the right have to make sure we do a good job of presenting the issues, engaging, actually having fruitful dialogue, not just ripping each other apart. Um, and I think that's what we're going to have to see moving forward uh, if, we, if we want to see a successful 2024. No doubt, no doubt about it. Kellyanne, you know, I mean, being president has enormous power with it. You have Air Force One. You know, I was on the campaign trail. I saw you land. It's, it's huge. You know, you have this kind of magnanimous uh, air about you as president. Is that alone enough for Biden? Or do you think a clear policy choice means, hey, Biden's not so inevitable? It's not enough for Biden. The interesting thing about Biden, Kaylee, is that Obama was fresh and new, political outsider, was going to make history, would show up somewhere and throngs of people would be there. Donald Trump, political outsider, is going to be fresh and new, take that businessman's approach to the country, would show up, including with you on Air Force One, and throngs of people there. Nobody shows up for Joe Biden. It wasn't just COVID. I think he'd get the same 12 people in this <laughs> gymnasium right now. Um, it looks like Sunday dinner at my house sometimes when he shows up at a Biden rally. So what is his fresh and new approach in 2024? I, I don't think it's going to be online fundraising. I don't think it's going to be crowds, you know, who are there. Um, but to the point of the Republican Party, I'm glad there's competition. A competition made this country great, makes yes. the party great. Yeah. Let's suss out the issues. Let's let the voters in Iowa who are so smart and so deliberative um, go ahead and, and and see the candidates up close and personal but I think Biden is gonna his he hopes that inertia will not be overtaken by friction and that's his best strategy but I one last thing Biden and Harris make otherwise smart Democrats say the craziest things I mean it just makes no sense they defend them as if they want them to be the standard bearers, they want them to be in the end job, and they don't. I, I would like one or two Democrats just to stand up and say this isn't good for the party long term. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I do hope they bring back those Biden pandemic rallies with the honks. Remember the obnoxious honks <laughs> instead perfect. of the claps? Oh, yes, yes. For sure. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.